Back when I was doing my last video, I thought it'd be a good idea to start a World Conquest A to Z series. I go to look up the list of countries and yeah, it doesn't start off too great. To keep this interesting, I'm going to use the Road to 56 mod. The focus trees are pretty balanced and it makes it so I'm not playing the generic focus tree for half the countries. Also, I'm going to play with the non-historical on because it's objectively better if you want a fun and interesting game. So our first look at the focus tree, it's pretty obvious that it appears to be split down the four ideologies. It goes without saying that for World Conquest, there should be communist or fascist, but the fascist tree looks pretty interesting, so I'm gonna go down that path. <laughs> Looking at the tech tree too, I can see that there are some really interesting late game builds with these support companies. Looking at Europe, this game's gonna be uh, really interesting. To get to my focus tree, I have to go through a relatively inconsequential civil war to go fascist, and boom, got the civil war. I can start to go down the tree now, but for a while there's not gonna be much to do, but wait and observe the situation evolving around us. Okay, and like I was just saying, uh, this changes things quite a bit. My focus tree uh, lets me start a Pakistani revolution in India. So now that they are separated from Britain, it makes it pretty reasonable to go down that path. If I click these buttons, I can spawn units essentially behind enemy lines. Uh, I'm not sure how effective it'll be, but I suppose I'll play the game as intended. Okay, so I clicked all the buttons. I think I'm ready to start the revolution. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Okay, so we got a decent amount of units to work with behind the lines. I'm going to use these to cut off the enemy divisions and destroy them. Uh, Pakistan has just exploded out of India. It's not really what I want, but I'll invite them to our faction and continue on. It is what it is. All of their equipment has been destroyed, so it's much easier to move around them. It's just important to keep the pressure on so they don't regain any of their strength. After a couple months of fighting, he broke through their lines. Now I'm going to rush down their victory points and the war should be over. With India gone, I'm going to grab Pakistan really quick. I have a couple of decisions that let me core their states. Iran declared war on the Soviets for some reason. I don't want to go to war with the Soviets just yet, so I'm instead going to go to war with Iran. Just like Pakistan, I have that decision that lets me core their states with enough compliance, so I was planning on going to war with them anyways. Okay, so right now Europe is all at war with each other, so it's a good time as they need to declare war on the Soviet Union. I'm thinking that eventually they're going to declare war on Finland and draw their faction in. They're going to essentially put themselves in a two-front war, but my faction isn't necessarily a small one either, so I'm not really worried about it. There are a couple things I need to do first. To begin with, I'm going to steal India's manpower from myself and then re-release them so I don't have to manage their resistance. And then just like in the war against India, I can essentially cause an uprising behind Soviet lines. I'll take full advantage of this and try to encircle as many Soviet units as possible when the war starts. China is asking to join my faction. This is good for now as they're one of the most powerful countries in the world at this point, and they will also help me on this front line over here which desperately needs it. Britain is the last one to go, and we are done. This is what the peace conference looks like. I ended up getting a decent chunk of Russia. The next nation I would go after is this one, which is in a small faction. They are the only major in that faction too, so once I capitulate them, I get all of them.
and after a couple relatively insignificant battles, they all capitulated. Now it's time to prepare for the European faction. This one is definitely going to be the hardest war in this campaign. At first I can easily push into some of their tiles, but then their divisions entrench themselves and they have too much of a defensive bonus for me to break. I'm able to get off a few encirclements, but their line solidified not long after that. For a while here I'm just going to encircle this port and destroy any of the units that land here to get rid of at least some divisions. The only weakness in enemy lines I can find so far is in Yugoslavia. I'm not confident I'm going to be able to push very far, so for now I'll just use it as an opportunity to encircle some troops. So I'm noticing that for some reason the enemy is not properly reinforcing their front lines here. I'm going to grab another army and see how far I can push into Yugoslavia. At this point, it's pretty clear that Yugoslavia is going to capitulate. Obviously, the next nation I want to try and capitulate is going to be Italy. And by that point, the dominoes are starting to fall and the balance of power is tilted in my favor. Italy has capitulated, now we're naturally going to go on to France. With all of Europe occupied, now the only major I have to take down is Sweden. So I haven't got the peace deal, that's because Guantanamo Bay is for some reason a major. I honestly have no idea why they qualify as one. Boom. And with that, there's only a couple other nations I have to conquer before I complete the war conquest. Cleaning up the rest wasn't too difficult, and with that, the first nation of this series is completed. The next one on this list is Albania, so safe to say it's not going to get any easier from here on out. If you made it this far, my thanks to you for sticking it out with me, I really do appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next one.